So this is part two of our review session. So here's what we're doing. First thing we're going to do is we're going to add these polynomials, okay? So we're going to add these. And then we're going to subtract and multiply polynomials, all right? So here we're going to subtract, um, and then we're going to multiply, all right? So how is this done? Now this is just one example, okay? Um, there are many. If you'd like, I highly recommend Khan Academy. He's very good at giving you examples and going through details. Um, what I'm going to do is I might give you some steps, um, and they're more or less to help me, and it's the trick I've found that helps me. So you find your own trick, that's fine, as long as it's working and helping you work through the problem. So check this out. Adding these polynomials here. Adding polynomials is really simple, okay? This is all format. It's, it's just the way it looks. When you add, follow this. First, drop your parentheses. And then second, combine your like terms. Okay? Adding is that simple. I'm going to erase this, so if you need to pause to raise down, I would do so. But <coughs> these, this is, these are the easy steps. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to drop the parentheses. 5k squared minus 3k plus 4 plus... 3k minus 7. Doesn't get any simpler than that. Let's just drop the parentheses, keep all your signs, keep all your numbers, all your letters, you're all good. Combining like terms, there is no other k squared term in this. So we're going to keep 5k squared. I have a minus 3k and a plus 3k. Well, negative 3 plus positive 3 gets me 0. I'm not going to write zero, because zero plus anything leaves you with that anything. So I'm going to cancel that out. Next thing I'm going to do, plus four minus seven. Four minus seven. Well, that's negative three. So here we go. Four plus seven, that's negative three. I've combined all the terms. I'm done. It is that simple. Okay. All right, so subtracting. Now, subtracting is a little bit different. Because I have this subtraction here, what I'm going to do, as far as steps go, first, I'm going to change the sign of every term on the right side. So if it's positive, like this is, it's going to become negative. If it's negative, it'll become positive. I'm going to change it on this right side, and just the right side, because this subtraction is just affecting what's on this right. All right. Um, then I'll drop the parentheses and combine everything, and it looks like this. So we're, we're going to, um, in mathematical terms, I'm going to distribute this negative sign to all the terms on the right side. Um, but for the sake of simplifying my verbiage a little bit, um, we're going to change the sign. Terms on right side. All right. And you're also going to drop the parentheses at the same time, and then the second thing we're going to do is combine our like terms again. Okay. All right. So watch carefully. It's, you know, it might look like magic, but it's not. So as I drop the parentheses, nothing changes on the left side. So 3y cubed plus 8y minus 6. But now as I get to my right side, that is a positive y cubed. So I have to change it to negative y cubed. And then I have a negative 5y, so I'm going to change it to a positive 5y. Then I have a negative 2. I'm going to change that to positive 2. So it's positive 2. That's what I mean by change the signs of everything on the right side. I'm going to drop the parentheses. Now I'm going to combine the like terms. All right, so I have a negative 3y cubed and a negative y cubed. So a negative 3 plus a negative 1 is negative 4y cubed. Done with those. All right, I got a positive 8y and a positive 5y. Be careful, 8 plus 5 is 13. All right, done with that one. Now I got negative 6, positive 2, so negative 6 plus positive 2 it gets me negative 4. And I'm done. Okay? 
So subtraction is not hard, just you, you gotta be careful, watch your signs, make sure you follow that. Addition, pretty easy, straightforward, drop your parentheses, combine your like terms. All right, multiplication. This has been, it's been debated what technique you should use to teach how to multiply binomials, okay? There are all kinds of techniques out there. You go online, Khan Academy, anywhere, they will show you how to do this. I'm going to show you the box method. The box method, um, the box method can be used to multiply them, but it can also be used in a process we call factoring, and I'll demonstrate that um, in a little bit. But I'll show you the box method. But essentially, what we're doing is we're using the distributive property so that every term multiplies times every other term. And I'm just distribute and essentially instead of distributing one number to both terms, I'm distributing two to both terms. So the this term multiplies to these two. And this term also multiplies to these two. So we're gonna end up with four new terms. And when you combine like terms, generally speaking you're left with a trinomial after this. So a three part. Um, three-part problem. So let me show you the box method. This would be how I would sh demonstrate the, the distributive method, but I'll show you the box method for the time being. So box method works this way. The marker's slightly dying, so I'm going to switch it up on here. Um, I'm going to take this first factor. I'm going to break it up. So I have 4x and minus 7. Okay. Now I'm going to take the second factor and break it up on this left side. So we have 2x and I'm going to say positive 8. Now I keep the signs here so that I remember is it a positive number, is it a negative number? Um, and then you multiply, just like we did here with the distributive property, okay? We're multiplying 4x times both of these, and, it, and their result, their product is written in these respective boxes. I'm also going to multiply negative 7 times both of these, and it's their products are in these boxes. So it looks like this. Look, 4x times 2x. If that looks overwhelming to you, try this. 4 times 2 is 8. x times x is x squared. Alright? Let's try again. So I get 4x times 8. Well, 4 times 8 is 32. And x, well there's no real x here, so x times nothing would just it would be x. It's not times 0, it's just the fact that when multiplying times that x, so we carry it on down, okay? Negative 7 times 2x is negative 14x. Then negative 7 times positive 8, that's negative 56, okay? Now that I have all my, my four new terms, just like the should probably, 4x times 2x, 4x times 8, negative 7 times 2x, and negative 7 times 8. I got all four of them right there. I'm going to add them together and combine like terms. So I end up with 8x squared minus 14x plus 32x minus 56. And when you combine your like terms, negative 4x positive 32, because there's no x squared term except 8x, you end up with positive 18x minus 56, and you are done. All right? So there you go, that's how you multiply your binomials, adding, subtracting polynomials. Um, and if you look on down the page to number 12, there's a problem that looks something like this. 3x times 2x plus 8 minus uh, x squared. Okay? And you ask yourself, well how would you do this? You may use the box method as well by putting a box where you separate these three terms. So 2x, 8, and negative x squared, and you multiply it times 3x. There's only going to be one term out here. Um, you can use that, or you can use the distributive property, that's fine. So you get 3x times 2x, which is what this would be, 3x times 8, which is what that would be, and 3x times x, well, negative x squared, which is what that would be. So 3x times 2x, that leaves us with 3 times 2, which is 6. x times x is x squared. Okay. This is x to the one power, this is x to the one power. So you add those exponents and now it's x to the two power. 3x times 8. 3 times 8 is 24 times x. x is positive. Alright? And then 3x times x, negative x squared. So that's definitely going to be negative. 
negative 3, x times x squared. Remember, x to the 1 power, x to the 2 power, you add it, and now it's x to the 3rd power. And so this is your equation, the sign go between. I'll make this even more clear. That's plus 24 and minus 3x squared, or x cubed. And this is your answer, okay? Just to kind of give clarification. 13 is just like this. You can use the box method for that. Now let's talk about factoring just for a moment. And I know this is going long. So again, if you're not done, pause it. And this is where you can stop. But I'm going to go on to number, uh, number 14 on your paper. And I'm also going to do number 16 on your paper. I might even address two concerns you may have with 17 and 18. Um, so uh, just re-race it really quick. And then I'll write the problem up. And I'll get that up for you. Um, so let's see, it looks like this. Sorry, I put the paper down below the camera, so if I look like I'm creeping towards you, sorry. All right, here we go. X squared minus 6x plus 5. Now, um, I wrote some steps in class at one point on steps of how to factor this, okay? So, again, like I said, you can use the box method to kind of reverse the process we just did. But how does that work? Well, you know that you're going to have two factors, all right? One factor is going to be up here on top you have something plus or minus something here. And another factor is going to be here on the side, on this left side. So something plus or minus something down here. So the end result you want, you want two factors from this problem. You want to be able to break this up into two factors. Okay. So to go backwards, let's start with the first term and the last term. X squared. What two numbers multiply together to give me x squared? Well, it's not too bad. x times x equals x squared. x to the first power times x to the first power equals x to the second power. All right, well, what two numbers multiply to give me 5? Well, that's going to take a little bit more work. So we're going to write over here all the factors of 5. Now, 1 times 5 is 5. 5 is a prime number, so it kind of stops there. However, I need positive 5. And I know negative 1 times negative 5 gets me positive 5. So I got two options. Now, after a while, you'll see some tricks. Like, for instance, I know this in the middle is negative. The only way to get a negative number is to use negative numbers. Okay? So, I would naturally choose a negative one. But, if you happen to choose this, these factors here, watch what happens. If I did positive 1, or positive 5 times positive 1, right? Watch this. This is just a check. I want to make sure I'm on the right track, right? So, so far, I believe my factors are x plus 5, x plus 1. Watch what happens. Just in case I'm wrong, I check myself. So, we're going to fill in this box just like we did before. Uh, x times x is x squared, works for me. x times 1 is x. x times 5 is 5x. Add all these together, so we get x squared plus x plus 5x plus 5. Combine your like terms, well, x squared stays. 1x plus 5x, it is a 6x plus 5. Now look, did I get the same thing I got? Did I get the same thing I started with? No, that's a negative 6x, that's a positive 6x. It doesn't work. So I, I, didn't, I either chose the wrong pair of numbers or ordered them improperly. But <coughs> we know, because I told you, I chose the wrong pair of numbers, and I wanted to show you what that looks like. So checking your work always is a help. Okay, so we're going to erase this, and we're going to go with our next factors, okay? And show you what that looks like when you get it right. So this is negative 5 and negative 1. So instead of x minus, or plus 5, it would be x minus 5 and x minus 4. All right, well, check it. See if those are really the factors on that should be there. So we have x minus 1 minus x, x times negative 5, negative 5x, combine, like add it all together, x squared minus 5x minus x plus 5, combine your like terms, x squared minus 6x uh, plus 5, it checks out, <coughs> but when I ask you to factor it, this is what I'm looking for, that would be your answer, you could stop right there. So what happens if I'm asking you to solve, all right? What if I'm solving? Well, I give you this equation, okay? You would 
have to go through this whole process in factory. All right? And if you're solving, you always have, it's always set equal to zero. If you're factory, not necessarily. Okay? So this will be set equal to zero. When you factor it, it'll be set equal to zero. And then when you solve it, you take each of the factors and set them individually equal to zero. Okay? And you solve for x from in both instances. So we're going to add 5, add 5, and this gives you x equals 5. This one, add 1, add 1, x equals 1. Those are my solutions. What does that even mean? Well, remember back when we were looking at the graph of our parabola, okay? This would represent a parabola that intersects the graph. I don't know, my graph's a little off, huh? but intersects the graph at x equals 1 and x equals 5. That's what that would represent. It's the place where this, the graph of this equation, hits the x-axis. So our x-intercepts, the zeros, or solutions, all three of those are names for the solutions to this equation. Okay. So there's how you factor and how you solve, for that matter. Uh, number 14, which is this one, only asks you to factor it. So it was only wanting you to go this far. Okay. And that's not a view that's a check mark. So you would go this far and stop. Okay. Um, what happens if you don't have a number right here in front? Uh, let me show you that. Let me show you number 17 and number 18 real quick. Some tricks to work with those, because those ones um, those ones are similar to this. There's no coefficient. All right. So if you look at number 17, all right. If you look at number 17, problem with number 17. All right. It says x squared plus 9x equals negative 20. What's the problem with this? When you had to solve other problems, they were equal to zero. This one's equal to negative 20. We need to fix that. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve this equation. We're going to move that negative 20 to this other side. And how do you do that? Well, add the opposite. Add 20. Add 20 to both sides of my equation here. So now I'm going to have negative 20 plus 20 and equal to zero. It takes care of my problem. But what happens to this left side? Well, it's just like combining terms. You can't do anything with 20 and x squared. They don't have x in common. Neither can you do with 9x. So a 20 just stands by itself. Now you have an expression that you can factor and solve for. Okay, well, what about number 18? You have x squared minus 49 equals 0. Well, that one does equal 0, so that's nice. But it's missing the middle term. Well, what do you do? You can, you can fake it. You can say, well, how about this? x squared plus 0x minus 49. Because everybody knows that adding 0 doesn't change the expression. It may change the way it looks. It doesn't change it. So now you can work on the box method and try to factor it. But if, if you're too clever for that and you don't want to do the plus 0x, it's going to turn out the same. x squared, negative 49 in these boxes, x times x. Two numbers that multiply together, each in negative 49, negative 7, positive 7. Either way, positive 7 and negative 7, adding is 0. So that works. Okay? So let's focus on another more complicated problem. Let's focus on 16. Okay? But that's a trick to kind of deal with what happens if it doesn't equal 0? Or what happens if I'm missing the middle term? So that'll work for that. Okay? So this is your last problem. And I know this video is quite long. Uh, but I hope it helps. I hope it's helpful. Last problem, okay? So here we're not factoring. We're actually solving. All right, you have 4x squared minus 12x plus 9 equals 0. All right, so check this out. This isn't going to be too bad, okay? First thing you look for is the greatest common factor. A number you can divide all three of these by to make them smaller and easier to deal with. Unfortunately, 4 is even, 12 is even, 9 is not. 12, you can divide that by 4. And 9, you cannot. 9, you can divide by 3. 12, you can divide by 3. 4, you can't. There is no greatest common factor besides 1. 
So we're going to have to proceed and move on. So I draw my box. I got 4x squared in here, and I got positive 9 in here. Okay. Two numbers that multiply to give me 4x squared. Well, there's actually 2. 2 times 2 gives me 4, and x times x gives me x squared. But also, I have 4 times 1 is 4, and x times x is x squared. So I got two options here. Which do you choose? Unfortunately, it's a little bit of guesswork. So we're going to guess this one, and we're going to see where it takes us. So we're going to draw our factors for positive 9. And i got to stop for the announcements. Pardon the interruption for the afternoon announcement.